What's going on guys? Well, as you can tell, probably by my social media posts, but as well the different background, I am not at home, I'm not in my studio. I'm actually in Austin, Texas, attending Fantastic Fest. And I'm here to bring you my review of The Toxic Avenger, the 2023 remake of the original 1984 trauma film. This was the opening film of the festival. Unfortunately, due to, a, we'll just say a messy ticketing system. You'll probably hear me talk about that when I do my ranking. Uh, I was unable to even attend the first night of the festival. So I had to actually go to a press screening at 8 a.m. during the second day of the festival yesterday to check this out. And what an interesting film to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning with like four hours of sleep to go and check out. But really quick before we dive into the good, bad, and the ugly of the Toxic Avenger remake, most of us do not have toxic ooze running through our veins that keep us happy, healthy, and nourished. So having delicious, ready-to-eat meals on hand definitely can solve that problem, and you should check out the sponsor of today's video, Factor. With school back in session, we're all back to our busy schedules of getting kids transported, attending practices, or even wrapping up some end-of-summer goals for ourselves. And with so much going on in our everyday lives, it can sometimes be hard to carve out about time to maintain a healthy eating habit. And take it from somebody that has three kids in school, a full-time self-employed career, as well as a gym routine that I'm trying to maintain six days a week. The first casualty every single day is gonna be a healthy meal. Factor Meals allows you to skip the trip to the grocery store, the chopping, the prepping, the cleanup, and enjoy fresh, never frozen meals that are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat, enjoy, and then continue achieving your goals. There's even calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories. And with over 34 chef prepared and dietitian approved meals, there's a variety of weekly options that will never allow you to fall victim to food fatigue. Plus you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with over 45 different add-ons such as apple cinnamon pancakes or fruit smoothies. So if you're looking to take the hassle out of healthy eating, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code CodyLeach50 to get 50% off of your first Factor box. That's 50% off by using the code CodyLeach50 at the link in the video description or going to factor75.com. And thank you to Factor Meals for partnering with me on today's sponsorship. So as far as my experience with The Toxic Avenger and trauma in general, I actually just watched the original film for the first time two days ago, the day before we started attending this festival. Me and Sean popped it in, and I believe it was his first time checking it out as well. I've never seen any other trauma film. I've never gotten the impression that I would enjoy any of those movies. I know that they are intentionally like so low budget, so crass, so like intentionally bad filmmaking that it's kind of their style like it's so bad that it's good it's kind of their brand and there's a very small window of success with movies for me to have that experience with unless I have like some form of nostalgia for it so I've never really had the interest in checking them out but I checked out the original and I gotta admit I kind of enjoyed it like it's not a movie that would be an instant classic for me but uh, I enjoyed the trashiness. I enjoyed the absolute, just low budget, low quality acting, just horrifically crass story. And I mean, when you open it up with a group of people playing the car point game and they run over a small child and then back up and explode his head, like when that kicks off your movie, you kind of know what you're in store for. Uh, so yeah, it was interesting. I enjoyed it. I might review some more movies in this series, but the burning question, not only before I saw it, but especially after I saw the original is, how in the fuck are you going to update that movie and do anything close to delivering that experience in a modern setting? And that's the big difficulty with the Toxic Avenger remake, is how do you have a modern filmmaking with modern filmmaking tools and Oscar caliber actors like Peter Dinklage and people like Kevin Bacon in here who's just a genre favorite. How do you have those ingredients and deliver the trauma experience? Well, starting off with the positives, I actually think they did a pretty damn successful job at doing exactly that. Giving you a movie that is very competently made and has all of the modern movie tricks and a stellar cast of people that are just fun to watch while also leaning as far as they possibly can into the trauma camp without going full trauma because that classic kind of uh, handicap statement of 
that you can't make that movie today. You can't make those anymore. So yeah, there's no kids getting their heads exploded. There's no uh, blind women being sexually assaulted in a fast food restaurant. But they lean as far as they can into that experience and they do a pretty good job at delivering most of what you would want from that. It's a very silly story. It's a very goofy ass setup. There is wild as hell directions that they take these characters and they take this concept. It is hyper violent and gory as fuck. Like that's definitely the element of trauma that they're like, we can go as far as we want there. Did you see Terrifier 2 last year? The fucking gloves are off. There is no red tape with this. Just kill everybody. Heads explode all around. So if you like Carnage Candy, they deliver the Carnage Candy and it's very fun gore. Like some of it you could tell is CGI, but with the tone of the movie, it didn't really bother me when I noticed that. Like this is a movie where CGI gore almost makes more sense than practical gore in a way. And I also like, the modern design of the Toxic Avenger, Peter Dinklage's character, as well as some of the other characters that he goes against, both human and uh, uh, human plus. The cast is a lot of fun, as I've already said. Peter Dinklage does really well in the role. He is playing the pre-dunk Toxic Avenger, as well as the Toxic Avenger himself. That was something I was curious about, because the original film, obviously, is a very different actor who's much more muscular, and they do this really cheesy, like, voiceover. And I was curious if they were going to stick to that. And part of me kind of wishes they would have done that, just as kind of a hearkening back to the original, but when you hire Peter Dinklage, you're gonna have Peter Dinklage. But despite my worries of him having the, the makeup and the prosthetics, and, and, and if that was going to look right in the most respectful way possible because of his size, I think they pulled it off well. I think it worked. And Kevin Bacon as the main villain has a ton of fun. I love when this guy dips into the horror genre or anything that is horror adjacent because he's just so much fun to watch. Just endless charisma from that guy. Uh, one of the big posters and pictures that was going around for promotion the last couple of days before it premiered was Elijah Wood looking very much like Danny DeVito's Penguin. That's another big name that's in here. I don't feel like he got to kind of unhinge himself quite as much as you would expect with the way his character looks, but he's still fun. Uh, but yeah, everybody that you see here that is a name that would draw you in, they're a lot of fun and they do really well with bringing what you would hire them for, bringing that actor caliber and bringing that charisma, while also very much knowing what type of movie they're making and trying their best to deliver that type of experience. And something that I'll say that this, this remake does really well with that they kind of put in place of the so bad that it's good zaniness of the original trauma film is that this movie has a lot of heart and it has some emotion there. You have this core storyline with Peter Dinklage's character and his uh, stepson played by Jacob Tremblay and him trying to be there for him while also having a bit of a commentary on the healthcare system and what it's like to be accepted and it actually feels at home within a movie like this. Like you wouldn't think The Toxic Avenger would have room for some genuine emotional and, and socially relevant storytelling, but they find a way to weave that in that makes this remake very different than the original. And by default, for everybody that's not like a hardcore trauma fan, it, it leaves a lot of room to get new fans for the Toxic Avenger franchise. And, and potentially sequels or wherever this goes, depending on its success. And finally, I'll praise the fact that despite there is some spots where there's CGI gore, most of the movie is practical. The makeup effects and the prosthetics on Peter Dinklage and some other characters are all practical and almost to a, a hilarious degree, which it, it just adds to that charm of that original, like that trauma feeling that is very necessary to appeal to the fans of the original. Uh, a lot of the heads exploding and some of the, uh, the aftermath of a lot of the gore and the kills is practical. And so even a movie like this where I think the CGI is not a distraction, it's a rare occurrence of that, I like the fact that they still put forth the effort to do as much practical as they did. Moving on to the negatives, I'm still not 100% sure what hardcore fans of the original will think of this one. I feel like it's the best version of a modern Toxic Avenger that you could probably ask for. And at the same time, there's just no way that they could capture most of what the original is known for. Like just the down and dirty ridiculousness that you could only see in a trauma film in the 80s that just would never, would never make it into a film in today's climate. 
not having that, I don't know how much of a handicap that's going to be for hardcore fans or even new fans. You know, there's a lot of gore here. There's a lot of crass stuff going on. There's a lot of ridiculousness. And at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's anywhere near as zany and ridiculous and taboo as the original, nor could it ever be. And I just don't know how much of a problem that's gonna be for people. The other negative is really just in the timing of this movie. Like when you look at the history of the original film and what that whole thing was meant to be, like this gigantic middle finger to modern movie making and the, the bloat of the 1980s and the excess of the 1980s and even the superhero climate to a certain degree. Now in 2023, the superhero climate is so oversaturated that we already have properties that are kind of a middle finger to that. You have things like The Boys, you have Deadpool, you had Kick-Ass even going back a few years before that. And so I don't know if the Toxic Avenger is going to stand out anywhere near as much in 2023 as it did in 1984 for what it's trying to bring across. Overall, I had a really good time with this one. So far, of the Fantastic Fest movies that I have seen, this is the one that I could see myself re-watching the most. It's just a goofy, zany, gore-filled, fun time, and I think it captures enough about the trauma days to at least appeal to somebody like me who can appreciate what the original does. I'm just not sure what the hardcore fans are gonna think, and I am morbidly curious to find that out when this does release wide. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, please click over here for all of my 2023 new release reviews so far. I'm also gonna put a ranking of all the films I saw at last year's Fantastic Fest for you to check out as well. Be sure to check out Factor in the video description below and like and share and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything that I cover in the future of this fest. And as always, guys, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.